Ah, yes. Okay. So it, there's a reason. It's not because I am a fan of a certain big box retailer that shall be nameless. All right. So what I'm going to do, I have the little ball and I have the allegedly very elastic liquid metal, uh, whatever, um, ball here, and I'm going to drop them probably very poorly. So we're going to think about it a lot before I actually screw up the demo, all right? So I'm going to drop them, and um, I think they're going to fall. <laughs> Pretty confident on that score. Okay, so down they go. And if they fall the same distance, then they're probably going about the same speed, but the bottom ball will encounter the floor first. And we're going to say, for simplicity, that it undergoes an elastic collision with the floor. So it's cement, you know, it's pretty heavy. Um, so it bounces up. If it was elastic and it went down at V0, then does that imply that it needs to come up at V naught unless the earth is recoiling with great velocity, right? Yeah, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll pretend that the earth doesn't recoil a lot. Um, then the, uh, the yellow one is still going down at V naught, and so they're going to collide. And after the collision, um, well, maybe, I don't know for sure that the lower ball is still going up, but I'm pretty confident that the upper ball will be going up. And my question for you is obscured. Um, <clears throat> if the collision, if all the collisions are elastic, and if the blue ball's mass is way big compared to the yellow ball's mass, then when the yellow ball rebounds from the blue ball, its speed will be most nearly which? All right, well, let me see. I'm, I'm terrible at this demo, so it may take a couple of tries. And then I'll give up. That's about as good as I'm ever going to do. <clears throat> Okay, so hang on one sec before we explore that. Okay, so this one has four balls of decreasing mass, and the top one can fly off. So let's see. No. Well, they ain't supposed to. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. <laughs> Let's try this again. Never fails. Get back there. All right, far away. Here we go. Oh, mister. All right. <clears throat> Thank you so much. So we'll let you play with these in recitation section, but I hope you notice that the little grape at the top actually got a lot of the kinetic energy from the, the falling uh, masses. So let's now see if we can understand the answer to this one. In fact, I think I heard it right over here. Do you want, do you want to give it a show? A shot? You got this thing. Yeah, no, you do. You, I heard it. I heard the right answer. Go for it. See? Yeah. Because, um, like, then the blue ball's mass is a lot better than the yellow ball's mass. Yeah. The yellow ball, like, won't slow the blue ball down. But 
the difference in speed still need to be the same. So, it'll, so, so she says, OK, let me correct me if I don't get it right. So since the mass of the blue ball is way big compared to the mass of the yellow, its velocity isn't really going to be changed much. It's sort of like when the blue ball collides with the Earth. And the Earth is effectively infinitely massive compared to the blue ball. So the blue ball's velocity just reverses, right? So the blue ball is, is missing a laser pointer. The blue ball is going up at speed v naught. And the yellow ball is coming into this collision at speed v naught. So what's the relative speed? To v naught, right? And then if we can approximate, because this is so much bigger than that, that the blue ball frankly doesn't care about the yellow ball, so it continues to move up at speed about v naught, then in order for this to be an elastic collision and preserve the relative speed, then the yellow ball will have to be moving up at 2 v naught with respect to the blue ball, which is moving up at v naught. So therefore, the yellow ball will go up at 3 v naught or thereabouts. Do you follow? That was, I, I think she deserves a round of applause. That was awesome. <laughs> Any question on that? Yes, Ian says, I want more chocolate, or can you do that slower? All right, so let's, <clears throat> so here's the, the large ball going up at v naught. That's too big. And the small one is coming down at v naught. Now, what has to be conserved in the collision? Momentum. Certainly momentum, OK? So it is true that m, OK, I'm going to pick up as my, as my positive direction. So initial momentum would be m v naught minus m v naught. And the final momentum will be m times, uh, I guess I got to make this a big V going up, and a small v. OK? <clears throat> now, I want to simplify this, taking into account that little m is puny compared to big M. So what if I were to divide through? by big M, try to illustrate the little terms. No cheating yet, right? I didn't divide by 0, and then the world explodes. OK, so <clears throat> in the limit that this is huge compared to that, then I could maybe neglect this term. And I could neglect that term. And that implies that the final v for the blue ball is the same as the initial v naught. It's not exact, but it's close. And so if that's the case, now <clears throat> this one is moving up at v naught, but the relative speed is preserved in the collision. So this one has to go out at some speed, v, such that v minus v naught is equal to the relative speed that we had before the collision, right? 2 v naught. Because here, the relative speed is 2 v naught. Right? Here, the relative speed is 2 v naught. So therefore, the outgoing speed of the light ball, the ball with small mass, must be 3 times v naught. About. OK, now, I've fudged things, right? I shouldn't be putting, this is a good equal sign, right? But by the time 
I get down to here, it's going to be relying on my ability to neglect the difference between, well, th that I can set the mass ratio to go to zero. Okay? There was a question. Yeah. Ah, so she says, say it loud and proud, but then how is kinetic energy conserved, right? Because what would be the kinetic energy before? Well, it would be one-half m v naught squared plus one-half m v naught squared. And if we say that the big mass didn't change its kinetic energy because it didn't change its speed, then we somehow manufactured energy, right? And that bugs you. Yeah, she says, yeah, that bugs me. So can somebody help me out? Did we? Yeah. So the answer is, yeah, we did. And he's saying, well, but in the limit that big M is so much bigger than little m, all of the kinetic energy, in essence, is residing where? In the blue ball. And so even if we were to shave a tiny little bit off its kinetic energy, it would still be moving almost at V0, right? Because the top one is really light. So this is an approximate equals because I made, I, I, I erased some terms in my momentum conservation. I did this. So my momentum conservation isn't exact, but the approximation captures the spirit of what's going on, right? Because, I mean, if it's true that big M is huge compared to little m, then almost all the kinetic energy, so if you steal just a little bit from the big one, you hardly notice it's slowing down, but you can shoot the little one up, okay? So a little subtle reasoning uh, approximation, okay?